Hello, welcome to Semantic Notes. This AI-powered tool helps you very easily capture information and organize it. It also provides you feedback and some additional insights which really changes the way you take notes and you learn. I start the process by typing in IBM acquisition of Red Hat, which brings up a few articles. I go to the one that uh, talks about the original announcement um, of this acquisition. I review the article and then I click on the notes icon uh, and note that uh, this acquisition strengthens IBM's infrastructure and cloud position and I can categorize this as key insight but I leave it as uh, default and I take a note and then I go back and select the article that talks about uh, finalizing the acquisition of Red Hat I review this article as well and then I go to uh, the icon and basically type in Red Hat Acquisition Complete and note this as well. Now I have a couple of notes and it's time to get into the app. And I type in show IBM stock price for the last five years. And what you can see is it comes up with the st uh, stock price, but it also provides a 21-day moving average, a 50-day moving average. It shows the IBM events, which is the acquisition of Red Hat, the announcement, as well as the closure of the uh, acquisition. Um, it also shows some market events, and these two actually, the coronavirus-related market dip uh, that happens in S&P 500. Uh, from its all-time high uh, and and the recovery a point uh, from which the S&P recovers those are the the the, the four events that are captured uh, in the screen so what what is interesting to note is that uh, you know um, prior to the acquisition IBM stock price was actually falling and as soon as the acquisition happens you know it starts it stops falling, it starts to recover, then it goes down again, and then it starts coming back, and this time it's more sustainable. And, and the point at which it really does come back is when it starts uh, going past the 21-day moving average as well as the 50-day moving average. So essentially there was some momentum building down. Uh, the acquisition of Red Hat seems to have... Uh, had an impact on it and and eventually uh, it uh, led to a turnaround and that kind of turnaround happens uh, uh, once the stock price is actually past the 21 day and 50 day uh, price points and then it continues to improve and then essentially kind of stays flat for a while uh, goes up and then you can see the price of IBM actually starts dropping before S&P 500 starts dropping um, and it starts recovering the same time S&P uh, uh, starts recovering. Uh, the question is did it recover as well as S&P 500. So let's investigate this. So I'm going to click on this uh, event, uh, the IBM um, acquisition of uh, Red Hat announcement. Uh, so it basically says that uh, the acquisition strengthens IBM's infrastructure and cloud position. Um, and it says the, the acquisition was made for $34 billion. I could edit this if I want to, but there's no need for me to do this. Um, I can go to the source article, which is the original web page that I captured using my note taking tool. Um, and then um, I can go back here and then I can say, uh, you know, um, show me analytics. So I uh, click on the analytics button and what happens is it shows me a pre-event 21 days, uh, post-event 21 days, pre-event 50 days and post-event 50 days. 
And as you can see, um, IBM stock price is actually dropping almost at 1% in the, during the last uh, 21 days before the acquisition of Red Hat was announced, which is pretty high. Um, and the daily volatility rating is also, you know, high or medium. But as uh, soon as the acquisition was announced, that trend seemed to have halted and it uh, went flat at least uh, for a while um, and for 21 days. And then the daily volatility was, you know, uh, a little bit lower. Uh, it's not easy to see by looking at that chart. But if you look at uh, 50 days, um, you know, you can see that uh, with the 50 days, it was dropping by 0.3% uh, on a daily basis, which is still pretty high. Uh, and it was maybe less volatile. Um, and uh, if you look at post-event 50 days, then, you know, it's starting to go a little bit more. Uh, and the volatility kind of, you know, edged up a little bit. So what really is happening is that it's only past that 50-day period um, that uh, the, the company is really taking off. So uh, we could have actually asked for that 100-day, uh, you know, pre-event and post-event uh, return and volatility information. The other piece of information that's really missing here is the volume information, and that could have given you further insight into, you know, what's really driving IBM stock price. So the user could have triggered it by saying, you know, give me stock price and volume, or AI could have recognized it and provided that. So that's something that's customizable. So why do you need semantic notes? Uh, the answer is twofold. One is the user may have some additional insights or information that's not available in the enterprise or, or over the internet. It may not be captured by the analyst or advisors. So the users uh, need to have the ability to take their own notes. The second thing is in cases where there is a discrepancy between, let's say, user's input versus an external analyst input, uh, um, then semantic notes can highlight the uh, difference and or it can weigh the personal, uh, the user's input more heavily and display the right information. So who can use semantic notes? It is a platform product and we've identified a number of use cases, uh, including the broader financial services and mortgage area, and also in DevSecOps. But investment is our initial focus, and this, these three particular use cases are investment uh, focused. Um, so the investor can use semantic notes to do their own research uh, and make better investment decisions. Um, uh, in another scenario, the advisor or the analyst can do use it as a tool to do their research and make better investment decisions uh, for their clients, uh, which can be individuals or companies. Um, similarly, the advisor or analyst can do their research using semantic notes, make better recommendations, and they can share it with the investor. So how does it all come together? The user starts by capturing the notes, and then they add comments which drive interpretation, and the system actually combines all that information and captures it as knowledge. When the user uses semantic core or as Perios, which is a product based on semantic core, uh, then they are able to use the charting, search, Q&A, and chat capabilities based on that ingested knowledge. For more details on Asperios, check the link that's provided. It's included in the comments section as well. Thank you and have a great day.